Welcome back to Vido's Astro Forum. My name is Vido Oerlemans and today I'm going to discuss my decision to upgrade from my ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera to this brand new 2600 Mono Pro camera. So let's get started. So I have been imaging with my ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera for almost three years now. And I was completely blown away by the high quality images of that camera from the start. And I even managed to get an astronomical picture of the day with this little camera from my light polluted backyard. So that was absolutely more than I ever expected uh, to get with this camera. However, it has been over three years and ZWO, so the company that produced this camera, hasn't been sitting on its hands. Uh, they developed many new Astro cameras, among which this ASI 2600 Mono Pro, they released uh, last year in 2021. So in this video, I will compare the 2600 Mono Pro to the ASI 1600 Mono Pro in terms of specifications. And I will talk about uh, why I decided to upgrade. And I hope this will also help you to make your own decision about what camera is best suited for you. So if you like this video, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you are interested in videos about astrophotography and space. So let me first start by mentioning what both cameras have in common. So both cameras are monochrome cameras with a built-in cooling system for deep sky astrophotography. So for those of you who are new to the hobby, remember that with a monochrome camera, you'll need to buy additional filters to image the night sky in order to produce a color image. And I have other videos I'll link to in the description below. If you want to find out more about the pros and cons of imaging with a color versus a monochrome camera. Now, another thing these cameras have in common is that they both use a cooling system with which you can cool the camera sensor down to 35 degrees below ambient temperature and this helps you to cool the seamless sensor down and produce hot pixels that are often produced by these sensors to a minimum. Now let's talk about the main differences between these two cameras. The first major difference between the ASI 1600 Mono Pro and the 2600 Mono Pro is the resolution. The 1600 Mono Pro has a 16 megapixel 4 thirds sensor, whereas the 2600 Mono Pro has a 26 megapixel APS-C format sensor. So with the 1600 you will be getting 4656 by 3520 pixels, whereas with the 2600 it offers a whopping 6248 by 4176 pixels. Now, both cameras have about the same pixel size. The ASI 1600 Mono Pro has a pixel size of about 3.8 mu, whereas the ASI 2600 has a pixel size of 3.76 mu. So, what does this all mean in practice? Well, this is the field of view you will be getting with the ASI 1600 Mono Pro when imaging the Andromeda Galaxy. And this is the field of view you will be getting with the ASI's 2600 Mono Pro when pairing both of these cameras with a 480mm focal length telescope. Now you can clearly see that the 2600 offers a larger field of view as compared to the 1600. Now, this picture is actually generated by a software program called Stellarium. So let me also show you an actual picture I was able to take of the Andromeda Galaxy from my backyard in the city with my ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera. Now, as you can see the Andromeda Galaxy, it fit in the picture, but only just. So what often happens is that you'll take many pictures of the same deep sky object, especially when you're using a mono camera, camera and you use different filters uh, across different nights. So what often happens is that despite your best efforts, the object shifts a little bit across the many pictures you're going to take of a particular object and you often end up cropping your final image. So it is super useful to have a larger field of view, for instance with the 2600, especially Especially when you're going to image large objects like the Andromeda Galaxy. You will have more space uh, to crop your picture. Let's also talk about full well depth and quantum efficiency. 
Now the ASI 1600 Mono Pro has a full well depth of 20,000 electrons, whereas the ASI 2600 offers a full well depth of 50,000 electrons. Now, full well depth refers to the amount of charge that can be stored within an individual pixel without the pixel becoming saturated. Saturation is a phenomenon that occurs when an individual pixel is no longer able to store any more charge. So, okay, what does this mean in practice? Well, let me show you this picture I took last year of the Crescent Nebula with my ASI 1600 Mono Pro. Now, at the center of the Crescent Nebula, you'll see a very bright star named Wolverine 136. Now, this star is about 600,000 times brighter than the Sun as it is reaching its end of life. Now, the star is obviously very bright in comparison to the much darker Crescent Nebula. As I was interested in imaging the faint light from the darkened nebula, I took many exposures of 5 minutes each. Now, During those 5 minutes, the pixels that are imaging the Wolverine star in the middle of the nebula are bound to become saturated. Now, When this happens, the camera will use neighboring pixels to register the light of that star. And this leads to a blooming effect where the star becomes bloated and looks more like a little blob than actually a pinpoint star. Now you want to avoid this and a pixel well depth that is two and a half times deeper with the ASI 2600 Mono Pro helps you to prevent this blooming effect. Let's also talk about quantum efficiency which refers to the effectiveness of your imaging device to convert photons into electrons. When looking at the specs, ZWO reports that the ASI 1600 Mono Pro has a quantum efficiency peak of over 60%, whereas the 2600 Mono Pro has a quantum efficiency peak of over 90%. So, yeah, at first glance it appears that uh, the 2600 Mono Pro has about a 30% higher QE as compared to the 1600. But I think there's a lot of confusion about this and there's more to the story than just the QE peak numbers. So at the risk of this video becoming very boring, let me dive in a little bit deeper and show you the quantum efficiency graphs ZWO has published for both the 1600 Mono Pro and the 2600 Mono Pro. So let's start with the ASI 2600 Mono Pro. The graph shows a wavelength of different colors of light in nanometers on the x-axis, whereas the quantum efficiency of the camera is reported on the y-axis at different wavelengths. Now the ASI 2600 Mono Pro shows a rise from 70% to over 90% in the 400 to 500 nanometer range, which corresponds with the purple and blue light. It then shows a slight decline from 91% to 70% in the 500 to 600 nanometer range, which is the range of green and orange light. Finally, you can see it drop from 70 to just under 50% in the 600 to 700 nanometer range, which is where the red photons are actually registered. Now, when looking at the ASI 1600 Mono Pro, the graph shows a rather similar picture with a rise from 60 to 90% in the 4 to 500 nanometer range, and it stays above the 90% in the 5 to 600 nanometer range, and it then drops to 50% in the 6 to 700 nanometer range. So, when I look at the whole quantum efficiency range for both cameras, they look rather similar. And I want to mention this because lots of folks only talk about the quantum efficiency peak and they incorrectly assume that the ASI 1600 Mono Pro is way worse than the ASI 2600 Mono Pro, whereas these two graphs look rather similar. So let's also talk about the analog to digital converter. The ASI 1600 Mono Pro has a 12-bit ADC, whereas the ASI 2600 Mono Pro has a 16-bit ADC. An ADC is able to convert photons that fall uh, on your camera sensor into a digital signal that can be stored as a file on your computer. The 12-bit ADC of the ASI 1600 can produce 4096 different levels of brightness ranging from black to white, whereas the 16 bit ADC on the ASI 2600 Mono Pro can represent 65,536 different levels of brightness in the range from black to white. So the ASI 2600 Mono Pro offers a much higher dynamic range in a single picture. 
The ASI2600 Mono Pro offers an additional dew heater on the window above the camera that can be used to prevent dew or icing issues on your camera. Now the ASI1600 Mono Pro doesn't have a dew heater. Also the ASI2600 Mono Pro has a back illuminated wiring on the CMOS sensor, whereas the 1600 Mono Pro has a front illuminated wiring. And Back illuminated wiring is supposed to help uh, to increase the sensitivity of the camera and it should also provide a further reduction in amp glow when taking long exposure pictures. Now, for example, I took this 5 minute dark frame with my ASI 1600 Mono Pro at Unity Gain. Now, it's a very good dark frame but it still produced a little bit of amp glow in the corners. Now, this is a 5 minute dark frame I took with my ASI 2600 Mono Pro. As you can see, there is no noticeable amp glow. The ASI2600 Mono Pro has a big sensor and a back focus of 17.5 mm. So you probably want to use at least 36 mm or 1.41 inch filters or even bigger filters with this camera. Whereas the ASI1600 Mono Pro has a much smaller sensor and a shorter back focus of 6.5 mm. And this camera works perfectly fine with cheaper one and a quarter inch filters. Now finally, when looking at the prices, uh, the ASI2600 Mono Pro is actually priced at $2,480 right now and the ASI 1600 Mono Pro is much more affordable at $1,280. So I just realized I put a lot of information out there, perhaps a little bit too much. So if you have any kind of questions about the 1600 Mono Pro or the 2600 Mono Pro, don't hesitate to put your questions in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer all of your questions and comments. And um, yeah, of course, I will be testing out this 2600 Mono Pro in upcoming videos. So if you're interested in that, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you like this video, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. And I hope to see you again in one of my other videos. And until then, of course, I wish you clear skies.